Hey guys, welcome back to Kenya Fan TV. Back for a match with you for this game's big weekend. Manga, Humbo, Steve, hey. welcome. Hi, hi, Abdi. Let's start uh, quickly. We can start with the first game, I guess, which is Arsenal versus Leicester. Um, Mambo, I'll give this one to you. What, what, do you, what are you thinking for this game? Tough one for Arsenal or they're going to come through it? No, it's not a tough game for Arsenal. This is a sure bet win and, and, and that's three goals against Resta and Saka will provide another assist, assist and a goal and I hope starting to start instead of Martinelli. Oh, really? Yeah. You, you want Martinelli to be benched? Definitely, I want him to be benched. He only performs in the after, big games. After, after how he performed against City? No. Oh, wow. Okay. Martinelli will perform in big games, but he will disappear in all the rest of medium teams. I think without Odegaard around, you're going to find that Martinelli is going to be playing better than Saka. <laughs> you're, going to find, you're going to find that out to be true. Uh, Steve, what's your take on, on that one, Arsenal-Leicester? Uh, I think uh, uh, that particular match will be an easy win for Arsenal. Though my problem is Arsenal have failed to, you know, uh, create chances lately without uh, their captain, that is Odegaard, who is missing out through injury. Uh, we've seen uh, a creative voice; they've been so uh, blunt. So my problem is uh, who will, you know, create uh, these chances for them. Uh, we saw uh, against Manchester City, they went down to ten men. And uh, their defensive performance was superb. Uh, Gabriel and Saliba did amazing. And also their goalkeeper, David Raya. So I think against uh, Leicester, Leicester doesn't stand a chance. Uh, they have been they coming off from relegation. The latter match, they managed to draw. And you know, the goals are not coming for them. Uh, we've seen Jamie Vardy just netting the, the ones this season. So I think uh, Arsenal will have it easy. And also we saw uh, Merino, you know, he's back from injury. So... I'm expecting him maybe to you know make his debut and help this Arsenal side create chances because as far as I'm concerned, they're attack attacking wise they are bland. Draw against Atlanta, not creating a chance. Another one against uh, Manchester City, a draw. So Arsenal really need this win. From the really need this win is what we got over there. We have to remember <laughs> we have won three games and drawn two games the previous five games so it's not a bad start for all but i think we have in the first in our first few games we've played against big teams tottenham aston Villa, brighton and 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 manchester city which i think even the points we have it's a good correction of points yeah and, and then also to remember the three 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 away games uh city uh, Villa and Tottenham as well. Yes. So that's, that's already a big game to yeah. have in your first five games. Yeah. Right, so I guess that's what we'll, we'll, Arsenal will be comfortable in that in that area. We can go to the, the next big showdown, Newcastle Man City. Steve, I'll give this one to you in Spain. What do you what are you thinking of that one, Newcastle City? Manchester City against uh, Newcastle United is a match of can wish to watch because I don't know if the the early kickoff Bad Omen is still available because we normally see big teams struggling in the early kickoff games. Mm -hmm. So I think, uh, I believe it's going to be a, a difficult game for Manchester City and also not an easy game for Newcastle United. But I know what I'm sure of is that it's not going to, Newcastle United are not going to hand over the three points on a silver platter. It's going to be, it's going to be, if, if Manchester City are going to take the three points home, they have they have to win it the hard way and they have to deserve it without the help of the referees. They just have to play the game because against Newcastle United, who are also having a good team but still shaky, I think uh, mm -hmm. facing a big team, they won't just face them as they've been uh, facing other teams. They have to step up. So I'm expecting a, a brilliant performance from, from Newcastle United actually playing at home. I'm expecting actually a goal from... Uh, Alexander Isak, he normally plays good in big games. Newcastle uh, were beaten by Fulham the last match they played away. That is, uh, we saw what uh, the former Arsenal boys did. I think uh, Newcastle will want, at home, will want to, you know, stamp their authority against Manchester City. Uh, previously, they've also been able to hold Manchester City to draw. And another thing is, you know, Manchester City will be without their captain. 
uh, that is Rodri, you know, who is out injured and, you know, who is competing for the Ballon d'Or. We've, we've seen Pep Guardiola saying the injury is worse. He might meet us for the rest of the season. So this will be a very uh, big loss to Manchester City as far as the title race is concerned because with the Rodri, he brings that uh, creativity and that he scores goals out of, out, outside the, the box. So usually we saw in that maybe Manchester uh, in that Arsenal game, they really lacked uh, a player who can score outside the box. So I think uh, Manchester City without Rodri will be, you know, struggling for goals. You know, you know, the difference between Manchester City and Newcastle is that Manchester City has 13 points. Uh, Newcastle has 10 points. This, 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 this is just a one game difference. And 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 Man- Manchester City tomorrow they are being hum- humbled down. At St. James Park. Yeah, we can. Oh, okay, yeah. everyone is very confident. I like that. Yeah. I'm, I'm on a different opinion that City are going to go there and do a job as, <laughs> I, as I expect them to normally do it. But regarding the Rodri thing, uh, he complained a lot about players protesting possibly because they got too many games. But now mm. he has his wish. He can take a long break <laughs> mm. and enjoy, enjoy himself for a while. All right, then. So then, uh, Mambo, this one is for you. Every time, every time the weekend comes, we have to give you. Mr. Jackson and Chelsea. <laughs> so <laughs> Chelsea, Chelsea at home to Brighton. Oh, that's uh, that's going to be a tough one. That's a tough one for me. I I don't think it will be a draw. Zil, nil, nil. I think uh, Abdi, we have to you know look at this uh, Brighton side. So far, they've been undefeated. Uh, it's just them, Arsenal and uh, Man City and Nottingham Forest who are so far unbeaten this season and you saw they managed to get a draw against uh, an Arsenal side and they also managed to beat Manchester United. Welbeck is out there scoring for fun. I think uh, this uh, game will be a tough match for Chelsea. Uh, Chelsea who are doing obviously good as far as uh, their performance. They managed to get three wins in three games uh, the past three matches. So I think um, uh, really, this is a, the real test as far as Chelsea is concerned because the, so far they've been facing teams uh, that uh, you know are not that big. Uh, the only big team they face is Manchester City. So Brighton managed to beat Man United. Brighton are doing superb. They are in wonderful form. Chelsea are also doing you know good. They are scoring goals. We've seen uh, Nicholas Jackson back on the scoring sheet. That guy is doing amazing. We've seen Cole Palmer. He's also doing good. And they have amazing, amazing talent. They can see the kind of, you know, wingers they have on and off the bench. So I think this will be an interesting match as far as, you know, the football fans are concerned. Miraculously, Chelsea is doing better than Manchester United. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, when, you, when you look at the Chelsea team uh, recently, you kind of feel, you, you get the feeling like it's like they're getting their grip, they're getting their grip back together. It's not they're not there yet, but you can see there's progress. There is uh, some kind of chemistry. There's some kind of progress in the teams, in the in, in the team. So and also actually the introduction of uh, Jordan Sancho, who had a who had an assist last uh, the last game. Sancho was really was really is, is, is going to be a really big big part. He's going to really play a big part in uh, Chelsea's uh, game this season. So and also not let me tell you one thing. I'm not going to mm. write off Brighton. We've seen we've seen how they played against us. Yes, we were we were what we were we were they scored after we lost a man, but still you can see that that Brighton team is not easy. They it's not an easy team. They have quality players. They have the likes of Mitoma. Mitoma yeah. can break that defense very easily. You have to see the likes of Adingra, who's not even the the preferred because well back. They have well back. Actually, an amazing, amazing, amazing talent. So mm-hmm. uh, it's. It's, it's a tie that I'm going to say is going to be a difficult one, but mm-hmm. not one that will come out of, out, of, out of a draw. This game has a winner, and uh, it's going to be a hard, Actually, it's, more, it's going to be a tough one for Chelsea than it's going to be for Brighton. I, I, I'm saying this because Brighton, Brighton have their team all together. They have a chemistry, mm-hmm. which Chelsea doesn't have at the moment. They're, they're playing good, but they're yet to get to the, 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 the group that I'm talking about. They are yet to get that team having the unison in the team. Unlike Brighton, who already have that. So it's going to be uh, an easy one for, not like so easy, but an easy way for <laughs> Brighton. And for Chelsea. I, so think I think my prediction a... for this game is Chelsea nil, Brighton 1. 
<laughs> that game is going to have another goal. Is that, is that, do you think no, that, game, a, that, game goal. Gonna be, that game actually counts three goals and over. Three yeah, goals. I think it's going to be a scoring a, match. A goal game. Yeah, it's I think be it, 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 it's going to be, as Steve is saying, uh, I think it's going to be a high goal scoring match. Uh, we've seen uh, the kind of form Chelsea are in right now. We've seen uh, what Nicholas Jackson is doing with the likes of, uh, you know, Palmer, Madweka and the rest. And uh, also Brighton, they've been unbeaten so far this season. And, you know, they've beaten the big team. They've beaten uh, Manchester United. They were able to get a draw against Arsenal. I think... Uh, Welbeck is doing superb. They have quality players. We've seen Ad Adingra who won uh, the AFCON. I think as far as I'm concerned, there are going to be a lot of goals with the likes of Joao Pedro in that uh, particular team and, you know, Mitoma. So whoever is saying that it's going to end as a nil-nil draw, and I'm hoping, you know, Brighton manage to win because they are being marvelous than Chelsea. All right. Well, there we go. The reason why the reason you know the reason why Steve wants Brighton to win. <laughs> Definitely we all know. Huh? <laughs> you, don't, you don't want Jackson to be banging. <laughs> yeah. all right, next, next, next one up we have uh, the late evening game on Saturday. That's uh, Wolves at home to Liverpool. Mm -hmm. Uh it's gonna be another tester there for Slot and his team out there. Uh let's give let's start Mumbo. Give us your take on this. One uh, that, you know, Liverpool, Liverpool came back came back on form last weekend. Yeah. So, what do you think this this week? Liverpool, how, how do you think Liverpool did uh, played better last weekend. The midweek against West Ham, they really played well, and this time they are traveling to Molix Stadium, and mm. and Wolves have this is their worst start in a season, and they are there in the second position, and so. This game, they'll be they will be determined to get their first win. So it's a very tricky game for Liverpool, even even though they are in a good position and they have they have all they are playing the, the their game perfectly. But I think it's going to be a draw. I don't think uh, it's going to be a draw game. This game has got it is it is from the constant from the constant uh, results we know we've seen from the previous matches. It can tell you it's going to be a draw, but this match has a winner, but I can't mm. tell who. It's going to be a tricky one because, you know, it's, mm. it's, it's really hard because uh, Cunha is hungry for goals. Man, and, mm. and then you see on the other hand, Liverpool want to be in the bracket of the big teams. So it's going to be a tough one. Yeah, OK, then. Well, then if, if it's, it's us, Liverpool, I think I think there's going to be a tight game, but I think they can. Yeah. They've got the quality up front to try and get something out of this. But now, OK, now we save the best for last. Mm. We go to you, Steve. Yeah. Sunday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, what, yeah uh, like this is it's coming it's coming thick and fast for Ten Hag right now. <laughs> you know, after that disappointing game midweek. Mm. Now Old Trafford, you have you know, you're welcoming Tottenham come in there. Yeah. Uh, I mean you've seen Tottenham so far this season. Anything there that, that worries you? Uh, after that, uh, you know, after seeing that uh, Tottenham performance yesterday against Squabag in the Europa League, I'm worried. And uh, we seen uh, they were down to ten men, and they were in the in their like tenth minute, and they managed to win by three goals to nil. Brennan Johnson is scoring out there for fun. Three goals in the, like his last two matches. So as a Manchester United fan, I think I'm worried. When you look at the current form, you we should are be worried. You should yeah, be worried. Yeah, I'm worried when you look at the current form you are in right now, a disappointing draw at home to FC20. And, you know, the best thing, the Manchester United coach Eric Ten Hag can say, you know, I didn't work, I didn't want to hurt the feelings of uh, my former team, that is FC20. <laughs> Honestly, that was so disappointing. And uh, it's high time, you know, we, we ask ourselves, is Ten Hag the right man for Manchester United? Ten Hag has been able to get uh, the... Um, good number of players. He's brought in the players from Netherlands, the players he thought he can work with. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, we, were, we we got a, a, a draw against Crystal Palace, which was also frustrating. Uh, we need a win at Old Trafford. As much as it will be a tough uh, match, I'm hoping, you know, we do well. But uh, we also have give credit to this Tottenham side. They've been doing wonderful. Uh, the last match, they were able to beat Brentford. Uh, they also managed to win over the week. We've seen uh, their, their captain, that is Hing Min San, who is, who is doing good and scoring goals. James Madison is also doing well. So I think this Tottenham side have a squad that, you know, can really go in the, at Old Trafford and 
managed to get a point. But beating Manchester United at home, I don't think. I think this is the man. This is the match that Manchester United did really to get it as a wake up call and you know kickstart their season. Hmm. Yeah. I think Guys, I think it's the I see, uh, this is I the sense a bit of uh, nervousness in uh, Steve's voice right there. Of that. Um, <laughs> I think the problem is when you look into this Manchester United side, honestly, Abdi and Steve will agree with me is that we are not getting the results. You know, we go into a match day, you know, having these uh, high expectations, thinking you know we we'll go bouncing back from a draw. And I think uh, honestly, we are, we are not getting that. that those we, we we've seen what Bruno is doing. Honestly, Eric Ten Hag is favoring Bruno Fernandez because if you we look at the match against uh, FC Twenty, Bruno Fernandez was supposed to be substituted <laughs> even in the second half. What did Bruno do honestly in that game? And what what I don't know why the moment you say Twenty, I just feel like laughing at it. Yeah, like, yeah. And and what Ten Hag is saying is that you know Bruno, Bruno is just saying people playing. playing. So <laughs> I think I think. Eric Ten Hag is favoring certain players and Bruno Fernandes, as much as he's the captain for Manchester United, he needs to start off the bench. We really need to have a consistent first eleven. We need to be, have people who are performing. Zig says not getting the goal. After the goal against Fulham, what is he doing honestly? Eh? Garnacho, when you look at Rashford, I think uh, as a squad, these players did a wake-up call and Tottenham uh, at home is the right game to, you know, get that reaction. It's the right okay. game for Ten Hag to be fired. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling oh you, God. this game, no, but tomorrow you know, Soranke, no, but Mamba, Soranke will score two goals, Sun will score a goal, uh, mm. and Man United will be beaten 3 nil. 3 nil, we are losing. No, no. Where are the three goals? Three. Where are the three goals come from? We've seen. Uh, currently, we've had. We've kept clean sheet the the past two games in the Premier League. We've seen Orana have the same amount of clean sheets as David Dreyer. So I think uh, our defense. Is, oh, okay. Yeah, it's You're true. Going it's now. true. Come on. <laughs> now Onana. Now Onana is in the, in the same boat with the uh, Onana. Oh, okay. Onana. I remember Onana. It's, 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 but, it's uh, just that it's just that one gets. A lot of praise than the other, but they have the same amount of clean sheets this season. And I think uh, defensive wise, we've we've improved. That we've brought in uh, the likes of you know uh, Mazrui, who is being wonderful. He has replaced one Bisaka perfectly. We've also seen the light. I don't know if he'll start. Now that's the problem again with Manchester United. Then Hag doesn't know his particular squad. We might be thinking uh, we might be thinking the light will start in that game. Then we see the one and only Harry Maguire. <laughs> But I think defensive wise we've improved. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, you're not you're not letting in much goals, but you're not scoring much either. So you kinda it's kinda balanced and you're balanced on both areas. But yeah. um okay, but that's that's how it's gonna be. So your take is uh, Mambo, Man United Tottenham. What, what what's your score line in that game? Tottenham three, Manchester United zero. <laughs> <laughs> Are you on the I same goal? That game, that game is going to be. It's going to be. I, I give it to Tottenham. Any, just as things stand, I give it to Tottenham. A four-one, a four-one or four-nil. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's an actually, for me, fun for you. Um, I think that game for me. I, I actually think um, it looks like it might be one of those games. Man United just do Man United days. I think two-one. Mm. I'll go two-one United. If you're gonna, if you're gonna sneak it in that one. I think. The problem is, yeah, Tottenham are too unreliable to go, to go and do things over there. <laughs> that's my that's my concern, you know. And I and I think and and then and you've seen it. You can get out, you can get out of them. Uh, and like and like Steve said, Man United have got decent defense. They don't leak in too many goals, you know. And I think that's going to be a tight game. Abdi, before you say that they have a good defense, you have to realize that. Whenever they have played against big teams, they have only played against Liverpool and they lost how, by how many goals. So tomorrow is another big team they are playing against. So there is no way you can say they have a good defense. Tomorrow, after after they play Tottenham, if they don't lose, that's the time we start saying they have a big, they have a good defense. But trust me, that's the nil. Oh, Steve, what, 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 what are you thinking? Yeah, I think I. Uh, Tottenham at Old Trafford, as much as Tottenham are in superb form, I think uh, it will be a tough match for Manchester United. But Man United will win by four goals to one. Rashford, Hoyland, Zigze, and you know, 
Uh, the one wow. and only Alhanda Ganassi. Wild numbers, you guys are talking here. <laughs> horses were, <laughs> horses were wishes. Dominic Solaki, but Dominic Solaki will score for them. Look at the odds for these games. Four-one-one <laughs> <laughs> United. These were our numbers. All right, then. So I guess this weekend we'll see yeah. if we get a Halan hat trick or a Jackson hat trick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe it could be a start for Sterling, first start in the Premier League for Arsenal. Or we could have a, a slot masterclass for Liverpool. I think yeah. Abdi I think Abdi uh one thing uh my highlight uh one thing I'm looking forward into this particular match week is the fact that Manchester City would be without a uh, road without injured. So I'm I'm looking forward to see how who who they'll bring in if it's Rico Luis or who will, will go in that particular position because Rodri has been a key part, an integral part of Manchester City's midfield. And uh, you know, Pep Guardiola said it will be a huge loss for Manchester City as far as the title, uh, at the title race is concerned. So I'm also looking forward to you know is Nicholas Jackson that consistent? A brace last game. So I'm also waiting to see if you know he'll get. Uh, a good performance against a tough that is a Brighton side who are good defensive with and they've not been beaten this so far this season. But for Arsenal, easy win for them and yeah, also yeah. Liverpool. I agree. I agree. All right, guys. On that note, I guess we'll see each other this weekend. <laughs>